Hello everyone and welcome back to the definitive Skyrim Let's Play. Last episode, we had just ended off heading towards White Run, White Run. And here we are. We're up in Dragon's Reach. Come to Dragon's Reach to discuss the ongoing hostilities like the rest of the great warriors. So we have a bounty to turn in. Incantations for those with the talent to guess them. And we're going to check in again and see if there's any spells we'd like to buy. There's a lot of spells we'd like to buy. Unfortunately, we can't afford all of them. Both Ice Spike and Fireball would be good spells to pick up. And I really, I really wish I could get Muffle. But unfortunately, he's not selling Muffle. Also, contemplating picking up either Candlelight or Mage Light. As they're an alternative to torches uh, for lighting. So now, candlelight will be very similar to a torch where we can cast it and it'll just hover next to us. Mage light has a bit of other utility options, whereas if I'm coming up to a big room, I could launch out the mage light and it'll float in the center of that room and lighting up that area. For now, Candlelight will probably get more use, but at some point we'll probably also pick up Mage Light. But as I was saying, picking up one of those two destruction spells might be an option, as they do a bit more damage, and they have a larger range since they're projectile spells, rather than like Flames, which is a concentration spell. You know, if you've got the aptitude, you should join the Mage's College in Winterhold. Well, I would normally go with Fireball. Hmm. Um, I went with Ice Spikes here. So... They both deal similar damage and they're similar types of spells. But I already have Flames and Sparks. So having a frost destruction spell would be nice. Frost damage also drains stamina. So it's good against warrior types of characters. So I can drain their stamina so they can't chase after me. They can't use power attacks. So that has some nice utility. Also from a more roleplay aspect, I kind of like the idea of using ice spikes since you can kind of think you can sneak up on somebody, use ice spikes, it'll kill them, but then the ice melts away and you have no evidence of how they died. I suppose Firebolt wouldn't leave a projectile behind, but there would most likely be evidence of of it burning. We'll 
will take some time to put a few hours in studying some of these new spells. Then we can go ahead, head to the inn, get some sleep for the night. And then tomorrow morning, we can continue. We have some more bandit camps to go clear out. you know it is dark now we mentioned how we might at some point return to Arcadia's cauldron at night see if there was anything we could pick up so we might take this opportunity to do that The fire. Take a seat and get the cold out. We'll think about I it. I enjoy this work well enough, but I'm ready to retire. I've been thinking of selling the inn to Isolda. Anyway, what do you need? Here, take a look at this. Some of the Jarl's men came by and left this bounty letter. So yet another bounty for taking sure out some bandits. White Run sure does yes. seem to have a bandit problem. I understand. So if we do decide to head to Arcadia's Cauldron tonight for a bit of thievery, we'll wait until after we've gone to bed, gone to sleep for the night, and then we could sleep out potentially, sneak out potentially. And then nobody would know we had ever left. Hopefully we'd have an alibi. Unfortunately, it is a bit awkward, given that there's so many people that like to hang out here. If you don't give them enough time to leave, even though you've slept and it's now early in the morning, they're still waiting around because they need the trigger to pass for them to head home. So it takes a little bit. But hopefully now everybody's cleared out, and we can potentially head out without being seen.
We might have waited too long. It's early in the morning, but it seems quite a few people have already woken up. But we can we can give it a try. Arcadia doesn't seem to get up until around 9 or 10, so we might still have a few hours to look around. Okay, well that was awkward. So again, that's the issue with those triggers. Even though she's presumably been inside for hours. She didn't start moving to her bed until we came in as well. But no worries. We weren't detected. And since she's had such a late night, she must be heading to bed and will be sleeping in for a while. So we should be good to go. Can grab these books. And she has quite a few potions. really need to take all of these health potions. Just take some of the better ones. Then she has quite a few ingredients. We'll want to pick up all of those, especially those fire salts. I definitely want that frostbite venom. I think I might have mentioned it earlier in the series, but Frostbite Venom is used to dye leather that can be used for those bags and pouches and bandoliers. And I like the, the dyed version. And so the Frostbite Venom is really nice, especially since Frostbite Spiders uh, don't seem to have it on them anymore. I think there's a way to craft a device to extract venom from, from frostbite spiders. At that point it'll be easy to get them, but until then, picking them up from alchemists would probably be the best way to get it. See if there's anything behind this locked door. If we can get get it unlocked, that is. There we go. Not much, but it's better than nothing. Alright, so we made it in and out without being spotted by anybody except for the dog. Quite a bit of jewelry here, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to grab any of it. So yeah, we're just gonna head back in. And what we can do is we can relax here for a bit, and then once everybody's awake, we can leave 
and act like nothing ever happened, that we never left. Unfortunately, from what I just heard, when you sit down, they always call on Sadia to go and ask you if you want something to eat or drink. Of course, it doesn't make any sense right now because it's early in the morning and everybody should be asleep. But we'll do some spell, spell research right now, some studying. We're starting to accumulate a nice little collection of spells. But we're just getting started in that regards. Definitely want to unlock the bound bow as soon as possible. Want a drink? Now, please, no more questions. If it's a lady you're looking for, you best look elsewhere. Once we Kyle gets them, they're got. <laughs> Some parting Are advice? You? What are you doing that for? All right, so we'll take a moment to warm up. Then once we're warm, we'll head out. I'll make sure it gets done. I think we're gonna head towards Valheim Towers. And so to save some time, I've actually cut ahead. And now we're on our way heading towards Vathheim Towers, but we actually spotted another bandit camp. Looks like they've positioned themselves on a nice overlook right by, right by Whiterun. So we're gonna take a look, see what they're up to. Given their positions, they must have been in prime location to mess with caravans coming through, delivering goods. So they likely have some nice stuff. here after all bleed, bleed, bleed. <gasps> so one bandit down but it sounds like there's still at least one or two more Someone there? So 
not entirely sure where this bandit is, but unfortunately they keep on detecting us before we can get an angle on them. We had a shot for a fraction of a second there. There we go. Ooh, right in the head. Looks like these bandits had a bit of infighting. Perhaps we can use that to our advantage. But we have another level up. Which means another perk. Perk point. Who's that? Rodolphe? Is that you? Boss was looking for you, said he'd be up at the summit. Better not keep him waiting. Alright, so... This guy appears to be... blind, or at the very least, very poor of eyesight. We do know that the head of this group of bandits is at the top, so we'll make our way up there to take him out. We can go ahead and put that first perk into Animage, and so that will help our illusion spells out a bit. Let's us use our Calm spell on slightly higher leveled enemies. So this guy may be a bandit, but, or rather, this guy may be blind, but he's still a bandit. So we're still gonna take him out. Right through the neck. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice little, little joke there. That Bethesda added in. The blind guy has a book, but there's nothing on any of the pages. Quite a few alchemy ingredients here.
All right, I paused for a moment, but we're back now. And we have a couple of bandits up ahead. So we can go ahead and we can actually try out our calm spell. See, look at the look at the power of of the calm spell. Well, it was powerful on the two we hit, anyways. But that that third archer still was able to take us out. That was a little unfortunate. See, look at that, we can just calm them, and then stab them in the back. This is why I really like Illusion for stealth and, like, assassin characters. Of course, you can play the more pacifist role where you just calm them and then continue to sneak on by. But if you're a bit more sadistic can calm them like this and then walk up right behind them Is someone there allowing us to get that satisfying throat slit The only downside is, I think, given the perks we have, and the rank of, of this Calm spell, we can only affect enemies up to level 15 right now. Now there's other spells that are a higher school of magic, which cost a bit more magicka that will have a higher base level. Then of course, if we continue to get points in like Animage, uh, we can continue to affect enemies with higher, higher levels. And of course, eventually we can also do things like enchanting armor to improve our illusion and ultimately if we run into issues with enemies out leveling our spells uh, we do have the option I believe to turn on some magnitude scaling so that our spells not only scale the cost doesn't only scale down with with level, but the magnitude scales up as well. But we'll see. Hopefully things are balanced so that we'll be able to affect most enemies in the game. With the proper perks, of course. You think it'll work? Dogs I could train, but a half-starved wolf, wolf there? not a chance. I, what was huh? that? So importantly, that one archer spotted us. We can pull this chain and open up that gate, and there's a wolf that will be let loose. Over here. Greatest. 
Defender while you can. So we're gonna retreat. Magic we'll try to pick up some steel. Pick these guys off one by one. So unfortunately we're in this awkward situation again where this guy's just stuck in the hallway. <sighs> See that's rough because that guy can just pick us off shooting us with arrows. But we couldn't do anything because the other guy was in our way blocking our shots. Didn't actually mean to uh, kill that wolf. I just wanted to fire an arrow over there to maybe draw them in. But apparently, <laughs> we hit the wolf by mistake. Fortunately, this really isn't the best showing of the illusion spells. But these archers are just quite powerful. As you can see, we've been able to, at the very least, reset encounters. So that we can go and get a second, sh a second chance at some sneak attacks. Those, these archers are really deadly. But so now, rather than having to simply run away, kite, and use destruction, Komgen now has the option to use illusion instead and bend the minds of his opponents. Put them at ease so that he can go back to striking from the shadows, striking from stealth, which is really where he's most comfortable and most effective. Can't hide from me. There you are. And while it's different than destruction, it's still it's still consistent with his his plan to grow his magical ability to gain power that way, relying on his own self, his own body and mind, rather than physical objects. And well. It certainly is appealing. <clears throat> excuse me, appealing to exert dominance through pure power and damage in the form of destruction magic. But by using an illusion, it's an entirely different way of demonstrating one's power by being able to bend the will and mind of others. I know I heard what was that? I think it's something that Komgen will certainly grow to value and enjoy. I know I heard 
must be my imagination. It's a bit cleaner and involves a bit more finesse than just simply what was that? Huh? freezing or burning your, your enemies to death. So there's still these two archers. We've learned our lesson, so we're gonna play it safe. Gonna make them come to us. Even if we swapped to our bow, they would have the advantage, as we're the ones peeking out of cover. Alright, I was around the corner. Oh, okay, I thought I was dead. Still, I was around the corner. Interesting, this guy is calmed, but came running over to us anyways. Someone there? hesitated for a moment. I was just gonna cast Calm again. I didn't think he was gonna be able to lunge that far. That was almost bad. Alright, and so I think we got the other guy with our bow earlier. So I think we're clear now. Finally. Other than dealing with the aimbot archers, I, th I think that didn't go too badly. Always gotta pick up the apple pie. But as you can see, the general the general strategy using illusion is to. Take out shots from stealth, then cast calm on on the enemies that survive, and then while they're calmed, we can we can do pretty much anything we want to them, including sneaking up right behind them with a dagger and slitting their throats. Now, eventually, we can also have some fun with some other illusion spells. We can use frenzy. So rather than use sneak attacks and, and calming our enemies if anybody survives, we can instead cast Frenzy, let them take each other out, and then we can cast Calm on the ones that are left and uh, finish off the, the last man standing. So I think... We're approaching the peak, and we should be finding the bandit chief. So 
So let's try to use a poison here. I'm not entirely sure how strong this this chief's going to be. All right, so we didn't even need the paralysis poison. We were able to take them out in one shot. And all right, so that's White River Watch cleared. We'll take a moment to loot the boss. So he does have some unique gauntlets. He has a whole bunch of steel plate armor, which again, quite valuable, but a bit too heavy for us to carry it. We might pick up some of the lighter pieces. So yeah, we'll pick up these unique gauntlets. Won't be using two-handed weapons much. But of course, it helps complete the collection. So even though we were heading to Valheim Towers, we took a little, a little pit stop here at White River Watch. Got a chance to show off our new spells, including our Calm spell. So I think we'll end the episode here in the next episode. We'll continue on our way to Valheim Towers. But uh, we're going to give give this bandit a little... A quick trip to the bottom. Perhaps on our way back we can find the body a bit closer to, to White Run if we want to loot it at all. I've actually used this method to carry the body all the way into the city to sell his gear, but I won't take it that far this time, but there it goes. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.